Okay, this will be a two-look Megaminx PLL tutorial. However, like with the OLL tutorial that I released earlier this week, we're also going to cover all of the quantum permutation algorithms in this video, um, which is A perms, E perms, H perms, and K perms. So if you're interested in one-look PLL, this is kind of episode zero of that as well. Um, as always, all of the algorithms that I mentioned in this video will be listed down, down in the description, as well as a link to my um, OLL and PLL document, which contains all of the last layer algorithms that I use and recommend. Okay, two-look PLL is a two-step method for permuting the last layer of the Megaminx. That means we go from a state like this, where the last layer is oriented, to one where the last layer, and as a result the whole Megaminx, is solved. So what are those two steps? Well, there's edge permutation, or EP for short, where, which is where you take these five edge pieces and move them all into the correct position, so they all match their centers like that. And the second step is corner permutation, or CP for short, where you take these five corner pieces and move them into their correct positions so that the whole last layer is solved. There are five um, edge permutation algorithms and 15 corner permutation algorithms, which might sound like a lot, and I guess it is, um, but I'll also in this video show you a trick for um, intuitively solving any corner permutation case, which means that while you're still learning, you'll be able to have sort of a backup method or a fallback method um, for cases that you don't yet know. So it might take a while to learn them. I do recommend learning all of them, um, but it might take a while, and while you're learning, you'll have a method that you can use in the interim. So with that out of the way, what are the cases? Well, these are the first four EP cases. These are the ones where we have two edges correct already. So for these two at the front, it's these adjacent edges, and for these two at the back, it's these opposite edges. It's worth noting that they won't always look quite like this when you first get the case. For example, if you have this case, it might look like this to start out with, where no edges appear to be correct, or it might look like this, where only one edge appears to be correct. If it looks like you've only got, you've got no edges or only one, I want you to adjust this top face and see if you can get two. Um, sometimes you'll only be able to get one. If so, that means you've got the fifth EP case, which I'll show after this, but usually you'll be able to get two and then recognize the case. So. If you have two adjacent edges correct, like in these two cases, you want to hold them in the front and the left, and then see what direction the remaining edges need to cycle. So if they cycle clockwise, like this, then you've got the first EP case, which is just which is just a J perm from the red three. And the way I finger trick it looks like this: R U R prime F prime, R U R prime U prime. I regroup there: R prime F, R two U prime R prime. You don't strictly speaking need to regroup, but that's just the way that I find it most comfortable in Megaminx. And done a bit faster, it looks like this. Oops. Sorry. Like that. If the edges need to cycle anti clockwise, like this, then the algorithm that I recommend is just the inverse of J perm. And that looks like this R U R prime, sorry, R2 prime, F prime, R U R U prime, R prime F, R U prime, R prime. So just like that. And a little bit faster, sorry, it looks like that. Now, for these last two cases, or the next two cases, we've got one more after this, um, for these two cases, it's the ones where we have opposite edges correct. If you have opposite edges correct, hold them in the front and the back right, and check what direction the remaining edges need to cycle. If they cycle clockwise, like this, then we have the CP case, which is a really nice just seven move algorithm, and it looks like this, R2, U2 prime, R2 prime, U prime, R2, U2 prime, R2 prime. So it's just alternating these R2 uh, moves and then just moving this layer anti-clockwise. So yeah, really nice case. And with this one here, we could use the inverse, like R2, U2, but that's a bit more awkward to finger trick, I find. So for this case, with a cycle anti-clockwise, the algorithm that I recommend is this, R2 prime, U2, R2, U, R2 prime, U2, R2. So it's still a seven mover, it just starts with R2 prime rather than R2. So, like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is the fifth EP case. Like I said before, sometimes you won't be able to get two edges correct no matter how you adjust the top face. So here we have the screen one correct, and if we adjust the top face, we have the screen one correct. And in fact, if we adjust it again, orange one, and however we adjust it, we'll just have one edge correct. So if you have just one edge correct, then you have this case, which is the kind of rare fifth EP case. You can do the algorithm from any angle, 
um, and it's kind of long, but it's really easy to finger trick and really easy to learn because it's just a J perm cancelled into a T perm. So it's a J perm missing its last three moves and then a T perm missing its first three moves. So put together, that looks like this. R U R prime F prime, R U R prime U prime, R prime F R, and then instead of inserting this pair like you would with a J perm, do a U prime and continue on as if it was a T perm. So R prime F, R two, U prime, R prime U prime, R U R prime F prime. So really long, but again, that looks like this. And a little bit faster. Looks like that. Now on to CP. Now I said that I was going to show you guys a trick for solving any CP case intuitively, and that's what I'm going to do here. The trick is that we're going to use a series of algorithms of the format r prime d prime r, then some kind of u move, then r prime d r, in order to solve the corners one at a time. Now how do we know what kind of u move to put in between? Well, what we're going to do is look at what happens when we do that r prime d prime r and r prime d r. If I do r prime d prime r, it takes this corner from the top and puts it down here. And then r prime d r takes the corner from down here and puts it back up, right? If r prime d prime r takes it out, r prime d r puts it back in. So if we do some kind of u move in between, then we can take it out and then put it back into a different spot. So here, we're going to do r prime d prime r and see where this needs to go. This corner is green and orange, so it needs to go between the green and orange edges. So the kind of u move that I'm going to do in between here is a u prime. To set the slot up to the front right so that when I do r prime dr it's going to solve this corner. So we just did a one algorithm to solve one corner. Now we're going to do that again but how do I know which corner I'm going to do it with? Well I want to look at what color this is. This is cream and blue so I need to move the cream and blue slot into the front right and then do the same thing again. r prime d prime r. Now what colors is this? Cream and pink. So the cream and pink edges need to go into the front and right, and then R prime DR. Now, one more time, this is blue and orange, so I'm going to move the blue and orange edges into the front and right, and then do R prime DR, a D prime R, and then see, okay, this is pink and this is green, so I'm going to do a U2 to move the green and pink edges into the front and right, and then R prime DR. Now that might have seemed really confusing, but um, I'll do it one more time just to show you. So this is the same case we just had. And basically, we're going to be alternating these D prime and D moves and just always moving the slot that the corner needs to go into into the front right. So here, R prime D prime R. This is green and orange, so green and orange goes into the front right. R prime D R. This is cream and blue, so cream and blue go into the front and right. And then we do R prime D prime R. This is pink, so this is cream and pink, so cream and pink go into the right and front and do R prime D R. This is blue and orange, so blue and orange come into the front right. R prime D prime R. This is pink and green, so pink and green come into the front right, and R prime D R. So hopefully that made sense. If not, just go back through those exact moves that I did and you know watch it back and try it out on Mega Mix yourself and see if it makes sense. Hopefully it shouldn't be too hard, but um, you might need to play around with it a bit to get it. There's one more case that I want to show you guys um, that's a bit strange for this. And that's this case here, we have four corners to solve. Now, what we want to do is start by moving a unsolved corner into the um, front right, because obviously if we started with a solved corner, we just undo that because it's already in the slot that it needs to go in. So take an unsolved corner, put it in the front right, and do R prime D prime R. Now this is orange blue, so we're gonna move the orange blue corners into the front and right, and do R prime D R. So it's all good so far. However, now you'll see that if we try and solve this, the orange and green, the orange and green edges and do r prime d prime r we now don't have a corner to um, adjust this top face to so what do we do now well we're just going to move any uh, we're just going to move either one of these unsolved corners into the front right and continue on from there so r prime dr now this is pink and cream so we're going to move the pink and cream um, edges into the front and right and do r prime d prime r this is blue and cream so blue and cream r prime dr and now it's solved so it's just in the middle there, we had to move a random unsolved corner into the front right, and that's fine. We can just continue on with that, and it works fine. So again, just play around with this a little bit yourself. You can use it to solve any um, corner permutation case, and while you're learning the CP algorithms, it's going to be a really useful technique. So that's how you solve any CP case intuitively. But once you've learned the rest of the 4 glass layer algorithms, and you're pretty comfortable with those, 
you should start learning um, dedicated algorithms for every CP case because they are faster and like especially if you're bad at this D prime D finger trick that I showed for the intuitive approach you'll find that these do save you some time. So these are the first four cases you should learn which are the three corner cases. Um, with these ones at the front we have two adjacent corners solved and with these ones at the back we have two sort of opposite corners solved. So based on the position of those solved corners and the direction the remaining corners need to cycle in that's how we recognize our CP cases. So for this first one we have two adjacent corners solved and the remaining corners need to cycle anti-clockwise um, which you'll see results in headlights here sort of I guess on the right hand side of that block whereas for this one here they cycle in the other direction you have corners on the left hand side so that's realistically what you'll probably see in solves um, but yeah they cycle anti-clockwise. So for this one we're going to hold our headlights on the right and do this algorithm r prime f prime r u r u prime r u prime f r u r prime f prime r f and a little bit faster looks like that like that for this case where the corners are cycling clockwise so we've got headlights on this side we're going to hold those headlights on the right and do just the inverse algorithm so that looks like this f prime r prime f r u prime r prime f prime r two u r prime u prime r prime f r so just like this like so so for these next two cases where we have two opposite corners solved um, we we can look at the direction of the corners that they need to cycle or sort of like the headlights trick before we can check okay which corner has a sticker that matches this edge piece right so this edge piece is cream and the sticker the corner on the right has a cream sticker whereas in this case that edge piece is cream and the corner on the left has a cream sticker so that's what i'd sort of realistically see in a solve but you can also just check you know the direction needs to cycle it's the same thing it's just maybe a faster way of doing it so for this case we're going to hold the solved corners in the front right and the back left and then do this br prime r2 prime u l u prime r u l prime u prime r br so just like that like that there's also um another algorithm that you can use this is more sort of normal finger tricks but it'll only be faster if your um, sort of peak tps is quite high and mine isn't so i don't tend to use this algorithm but you might find it faster and it goes like this r prime u2 r prime f prime r u r u prime r prime f r u r prime u2 r so it looks like that so i don't personally find it faster but you might so you should probably experiment with it and now for this next case it's where we have two opposite corners solved and the remaining corners need to cycle clockwise and so i find that cream sticker is on this side so for this case it's just the inverse of the previous case so br prime r prime u l u prime r prime u with that ring finger l prime u prime r to br so like that so that's the other one i use but again there's an ruf option and that looks like this oh, actually i'll just, uh, set it up so you can see the angle so we do it from this angle where the solved um, corners are in the front left and the back right and it looks like this r prime u to prime r u prime r prime f prime r u r prime u prime r prime f r u to prime r done a bit faster they might look like this so again experiment with the shorter and sort of longer finger tricky algorithms and see which one works for you so these are the next three cases that i recommend learning and these are the four corner cases so for each of these you'll see we have one corner solved and four unsolved right with this one on the right it's very easy to recognize because we have two sets of headlights but these two on the left are a little bit more complicated for these two you can either look at the direction or look at the position of the swaps that we need to do right this corner needs to swap to this position and this one needs to go here so these are swapping and say up here these are swapping right whereas, this, whereas with this one on the right these two are swapping and these two are swapping so you can do that or sort of a shortcut to recognize it is say okay if i hold the block on the left 
what color is this edge? Here it's green. Do these two um, corners that are adjacent to the edge have green stickers on them? Here they do. So you have this green, green, green pattern. In the back we have this cream, cream, cream pattern. So this pattern of three stickers um, is one we see on the left, but we don't see it here on the right. We have a similar pattern here, but we don't have these two patterns. Um, it sounds a bit sort of specific, but it'll get um, really easy to recognize later on. So yeah, you can either do that or just look at the positions of the swaps that you need to do. Um, but yeah, that's how to recognize them. What are the algorithms? Well, for this one on the left, we're going to hold the block on the left, the front left, and then do this. R U R prime U, R prime U prime R F prime, R U R prime U prime, R prime F, R two U prime R two prime U R. That might have seemed kind of long, and I guess it is, but it's also just sort of a cancellation into a J perm. So we do these first seven moves, and then we have a J perm but missing the first three moves. So it's just cancelling three moves into a J perm. So it looks like this: F prime R U R prime U prime R prime F R two U R prime, and then just insert the back corner, the back uh, pair, sorry. Anyway, however you want to think about it, um, yeah, it's a pretty good algorithm. And done a bit faster, it looks like this. <laughs> sorry. Not really used to having this many minutes. Yeah. So, for the second CP case, um, some people do an algorithm which is like from this angle, it's the um, big cube E perm, and it looks like that. I don't personally like that algorithm very much, I don't find it to be very fast. So what I would recommend instead is just the 3x3 three three E perm. Um, so if you don't know that already, it looks like this. We're going to do a kind of X prime rotation and then do this. R U prime R prime D, R U R prime D prime, R U R prime D, R U prime R prime D prime. So just like that. Now for this third four corner case, um, we have two sets of headlights. And we're going to hold the headlights in the front and the back right and do this l prime and then just triple zoom so, sorry triple anti zoom so like this and then l r prime so like that yeah so these are the next four cp cases these are the five corner cps where we have headlights on every single side um, for these front two especially, and to the back two to a lesser extent, um, for some people the intuitive, the intuitive approach is going to be just the fastest way of doing these cases. Um, like I've seen people do the intuitive approach in like 1 or 1.1 seconds for these front two, and I've never seen anyone do like a dedicated algorithm faster than that. So if you have like lightning fast D prime or D moves, then that might be the best approach. But if you don't, and again most people don't, one of these algorithms will probably be the best. Um, so. With that said, what are the algorithms? Well, this one here, where each of the corners needs to shift one spot clockwise, we can use this algorithm. F prime, sexy, R prime F R, U prime, R U to prime R prime, U, R U R prime, U to prime, R U to prime R prime. And done a bit faster. Looks like that. For this case here, where each of the corners needs to go one spot anti-clockwise, we're just going to do the inverse. So that looks like this. R U to R prime, U to. R U prime, R prime, U prime. R U to R prime, U. R prime, F R. U R U prime, R prime, F. So that looks like that. We've done a bit faster. Anyway. Now for these back two. Um, for this one, each of the corners is going two spots clockwise, right? This is going here, this is going here, this is going here. That's a little bit slow to recognize in actual solves, so what I would tend to do is see that these headlights match this edge, right? Whereas on the right, these headlights match this edge. Um, so you can you, you can either see what position the corners need to go in or just do that approach. Um, anyway, for both of these algorithms, they're 14 moves long and they have a rotation in the middle, so they're a bit weird. But um, the first and the second halves of these algorithms, before and after the rotation, are basically versions of soon that use R2 and R2 prime moves instead of R and R prime moves. So that sounds a bit weird, but I'll show you what I mean. For this case here, where um, each corner needs to go two spots clockwise, we're going to start with back anti soon, but with R2 moves. So like this, R2 prime, U2 prime, R2, U, R2 prime, U, 
R2, right? And then we rotate, and now we're going to do soon, but with R2 moves. So R2, U, R2 prime, U, R2, U2 prime, R2 prime. Right, so done a bit faster, that looks like this. A bit of an odd algorithm, but yeah, that is what it is. And for this one, we're just going to do the inverse of that, right? So instead of starting with back anti soon with R2 moves, we're going to start with anti soon with R2 moves. So R2, U2. R2 prime, U prime, R2, U prime, R2 prime. And then we're going to rotate, set this corners in the back. And then we're going to do this back soon, but with R2 moves. So R2 prime, U prime, R2, U prime, R2 prime, U2, R2. So done a little bit faster, it looks like this. Still not very fast, because I'm not very good at turning on the thing But yeah. There you go, anyway. Okay, on to the last four CP cases. So these are the five corner cases that don't have sets of headlights on every single side, right? So here we've got two sets of headlights. Here we've got two sets of headlights. Whereas with these, on the, whereas with these ones at the back, we have no sets of headlights. So these ones are a bit of a pain to recognize, but the algorithms are really nice at least. Um, whereas these ones at the front, recognition is really easy. So for these ones at the front, what we do is we see, okay, we've got two sets of headlights and one corner in between them. Which direction does this net corner need to go in? Here, it needs to go anti-clockwise, right? It's going to the right. Whereas here, that corner needs to go clockwise. It's going to the left. Um, so that's how I'd recognize them. For this first CP case, um, I'm going to hold my headlights in the front and the back right, and then do this algorithm. R, U2 prime, R prime, U. R, U2 prime, R prime, U2. R, U, R prime. Just with that push move. U2, R, U prime, R prime, U2, R, U prime, R prime. And done a bit faster, it looks like this. <laughs> there you go. And for this one here, we're just going to do the back mirror of that case, um, which is going to look like this. So we hold the headlights in the front and the back right, and then do this. R prime U2 R U prime. R prime U2 R U2 prime. R prime U prime R U2 prime. R prime U R U2 prime. R prime U R. I've done a bit faster, it looks like this. Anyway, now on to the last two. So I left these to last just because the recognition is such a pain, because um, looking at them first, you might not really be able to see anything. Um, the way I've found most effective to recognize these cases is look at it and say which corners need to go into adjacent spots, right? So here, this corner needs to go over here. So that's an opposite spot, right? Whereas this corner, it needs to go here. So that's an adjacent spot, right? And for both of these cases, you're going to find there are two corners which need to go into adjacent spots. So here, that's this corner needs to go here, and this corner needs to go here. Um, one kind of trick, I guess, to recognize them more quickly is that each of these corners that needs to go an adjacent, into an adjacent spot will have an edge next to it with a, um, a sticker that is of the same color, or that's is, is the same color as a sticker on that corner. So that sounds sort of confusing, but you'll find that, um, say, this corner and this edge both have green stickers, right? And you don't see that for any corners that go into non-adjacent spots. And so this sort of green, green pattern um, is one that you'll see over here, right? Cream, cream, like that. And you won't find it in any other corners or any other corner edge pairs um, around the cube, around the Megamix. <laughs> So that might have been a little bit confusing, but it's kind of just a tip on how to recognize it slightly faster. But yeah, basically you're looking for corners that go into adjacent spots. So here, this, this one goes here, and this one goes here. Whereas in this case, this corner goes here, and this corner goes here. And we see that green, green, cream, cream pattern. Um, so with this case on the left, these two special corners, the two adjacent corners, or the two corners that are going to adjacent spots, they're moving counterclockwise, right? This needs to go here, and this needs to go here. Whereas this one, they're moving clockwise. This needs to go here, and this needs to go here. So that's sort of a pretty long recognition explanation, but hopefully you get it. If not, I guess drop a question in the comments and I'll try and explain it a bit better. Um, but yeah, anyway, for this one here, we're gonna hold the corners in the front left and the back right, and then do this algorithm. R2, U2 prime, R2 prime, U prime, R2, U, R2 prime, U prime, R2, U, R2 prime, U prime, R2, U to prime, R2 prime. 
Um, and you can think about this as just the seven move EP algorithm, but just done three times and like cancel together. So just done a bit faster, that looks like this. Yeah. And now for the final case, that's this one. So we're gonna hold the those corners that go into adjacent spots in the front right and the very back up here, and then do just the inverse case. Or it's the back mirror actually, because it starts with R2 prime rather than R2. So that looks like this. R2 prime U2, R2 U, R2 prime U prime, R2 U, R2 prime U prime, R2 U, R2 prime U2, R2. Done a bit faster. Oh, there you go. Yeah, looks like that. Anyway, that is to look parallel. Let me know if you have any questions or anything. I know this is a bit of a long video and I covered a lot in it, but um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and yeah, happy mega mixing. <laughs>